Hello, friends, and welcome into the Cowboys Report. I am your host, Tom Downey, once again rocking an awesome Kashiyama suit. We'll tell you more about them later on in the show, but we want to focus in on Travis Frederick. Yeah, no surprise there. As I'm sure everyone has heard, he announced his stunning retirement on Monday, calling it a career before he even turns 30. Now, Frederick didn't play in 2018, had the Gia Barre syndrome, came back from it, and Took him a little bit to get going, but by the end of the year, I thought he was back to pretty close to being the same old Frederick. Now, many of you have asked me, well, Tom, what's the cap hit? What what are the cap implications here as for Frederick? The guaranteed money he was owed, owned, the Cowboys are not going to go after that. So he was going to count a little over $11 against the cap unless the Cowboys wait until after June 1st to put him on their retirement list. That's still going to be the case. If they wait, they do save a little bit more this year, but that comes at the cost of cap space in 2021. After this year, and for the rest of Frederick's contract, they save upwards of $30 million. So this year, not a lot of savings. Long term, it doesn't really impact the cap. But it does impact the Cowboys' offensive line this year. They don't have a clear-cut starting center. We'll talk about some of the guys on the roster. We'll talk about free agents as some potential Travis Frederick replacements, but make no mistake, you're not going to get a Travis Frederick caliber player on the roster next year. That's just not how it works. It's very difficult to replace one of the best players at his position with another player who's one of the best at his position. So we haven't quite had a full 24 hours, but we're getting closer to it. What is your panic level at right now with Frederick? Go and rate this for me on a scale of one to 10. I was at like a seven or an eight last night. I think I've come back down a little bit to maybe more of a six. You've got some options to replace him, but you're going to take a step back at center next year. That's just the reality of the situation. All right, so number 10 here, Daniel Kilgore is on the list. The Dolphins starting center last year. Miami declined his option for this season. Their offensive line was pretty terrible. Kilgore's fine, I guess. Like he's not worth playing. I just think he's a better fit in the end as a backup center or a backup offensive lineman i'm not convinced he's better than joe looney maybe that's a decent comparison that type of player you can start him if you need to i'm eh, just not convinced you're going to get the best results now these stats right here are all from pro football focus the sacks the hits the hurries and the grade all from pro football focus typically you see centers having lower options or lower numbers there Just the roles they play, they typically don't allow as many sacks, hits, or hurries as a guard or a tackle. So just keep that in mind. Those are fine production. That's okay production. But it's really not what you're looking for out of your starting center. There are some other free agent centers out there. The issue is I don't love the options. Ryan Khalil was great a couple years ago, but he retired. That's You want to bring in another retirement consideration guy and also got hurt. A.Q. Shipley, John Alipo, those are kind of more of, or Jalapeno, those are more of the same options as Daniel Kilgore. I don't even like James Frentz that much. So in reality, I don't like your starting free agent center options. I don't think that's a great route to go. So we're going to dive into some draft options and some options already on the Cowboys roster. But let me know, who do you think the Cowboys should start at center? I will make this the pin comment of the video. So if you're watching on YouTube and you get an ad break here, scroll on down and cast your vote right there. At number nine on our list, Connor Williams. Now he has started at left guard for Dallas and maybe your reaction is, wait, what? Which is an understandable one for making C. Will the starting center. He hasn't played the position in game before. He was a tackle at Texas. The Cowboys have made him into a guard. I do think his style of play Fits a move to center. And I know there's a little bit of speculation out there as to, ooh, maybe you could make Connor Williams your center. I am open to the idea. I also believe that I don't want to, to try and fill one hole, create a second one. I think that's what you would do if you were to move Sewell from left guard to center. Now you inject uncertainty at left guard. You don't know how he's going to play as a center. I would try to focus my center need. Williams, folks, was better in 2019. Again, all per pro football focus. You can see the the progression, especially in the passing game. More snaps, 
fewer sacks, fewer hurries, fewer pressures. That's a good thing. The PFF grade was only an incremental increase. Of course, that's just one data point there, but he was getting better. So I would keep him at left guard. I'm open to the idea of bringing in Ron Leary to maybe push Connor Williams, especially knowing that you might have to move your current backup left guard to center. More on him in a little bit. But I would rather keep him at left guard. If I move him anywhere, I'd probably consider a move to tackle. Number eight on our list, Adam Redman. Now, he's been on the Cowboys roster since 2018. The Bills cut him at roster uh, at uh, trim down cuts before the season began, and the Cowboys picked him up. Didn't play last year. Has only played 154 career snaps. I know the Cowboys like him. I think he's a dark horse name here at center. At minimum, he'll probably still bring you some more guard and center depth. My issue, I think he's best as a backup. I don't think he's a guy you want starting, especially given some other internal options on your roster, who we'll get into here in just a little bit. But let me know. Do you want to roll with only internal options or do you want to go sign, trade, or draft somebody? Let me know in the comment section. You can type Y for yes or you can type N for no. I am open to the idea, and we've mentioned this before, has to come at the right price. That could come in terms of money, in terms of salary cap hits, or even in terms of draft capital. We'll talk more about some draft prospects here in just a second, but I also want to tell you about Kashiyama, the smart tailor, and their brand new modern tailor line. You can text or call to get a free fitting at 214-448-9037 so that you can find your perfectly fitted suit. These are modern suits, folks, so you can put them in the washing machine. They have wrinkle-resistant fabrics, and they breathe so much better than the cotton stuffy blend you might be used to. So text or call right now, 214-448-9037. That's mix number, by the way. And don't worry, I'll put that phone number in the comments and the description for you guys as well. Let's talk some draft options then for the Dallas Cowboys. First up, Nick Harris out of Washington. There are five guys that I think could make some sense as early impact players here. Harris is the first one that we'll discuss. He's a really good athlete. That's his selling point. If you want a center who can get out in space, can pull, and can get involved in the screen game, Harris fits that mold. My issue is he's undersized and he's underpowered. I worry about that as it relates specifically to the Cowboys. Deron Payne, Dexter Lawrence, Dalvin Tomlinson, Fletcher Cox. Those guys will bully you. Javon Hargrave, too, on the interior. I worry about adding a center who I don't trust to be able to hold up man-to-man in protection or if against power. Now, his production was good. As a reminder, center production is normally lower. That's just how most teams operate. The centers very rarely matched up one-on-one. They're either helping or getting help in the process. So the, the talent there is good, but he struggled in the senior bowl. So I'm going to put him number seven on this list. Now, if you guys are like me, you're actually currently stuck at home. We're in Studio D right now. That's Studio Downey because, well, Dallas is now shelter in place because of the big C and all that. But the videos are not going to stop. So they might look a little bit different going forward for the time being, but we're going to keep pumping out Cowboys videos for you. We're not going anywhere. There's not a whole lot else to do right now. So the Cowboys videos are going to keep coming. So if you need a distraction, if you need some Cowboys content to watch, we got you guys covered. Hit that big red button and subscribe today. Number six on our list, Lloyd Cushenberry. I chose to go ahead and and match Harris and Cushenberry together because they're kind of opposites. Cushenberry's strengths are Harris's weaknesses and vice versa from from what I've seen on these two. Cushenberry is going to be better with power and with strength and with run blocking, the opposite of Harris. Frankly, Cushenberry regressed in pass protection this past year for LSU. He was much better in 2018. 2019, though, Big step back. And these numbers are a lot higher than what you typically see out of a center. Now, the reason was there is LSU changed their scheme. They asked their offense lineman a lot more to be one-on-one in pass protection. That led Cushenberry to getting more one-on-one matchups. He won't do as many of those in the NFL. So those numbers will come down. But that is a concern for me. I think it has to be. Now, Cushenberry has super long arms for a center, so I think there is some guard flexibility as well there. 
I don't think Harris can do, can do that exact same type of thing. So I will put Lloyd a little bit above Nick Harris, but it depends on what type of center you guys actually want to wear or to have going forward. Now, that's a different question, so just bear with me here. Are you guys going to any, any weddings this year? I'm, I'm sure you'll look awesome if you do. I actually am out. I, I have fulfilled all of my wedding obligations. I don't have any friends getting married right now, so it's a no for me. But you guys cast your votes, one for yes, two for no. Number five, Matt Hennessy, a three-year starter for Temple. I think he's a bit of a sleeper. He's not the same bigger name, guys, that we'll get into here in a little bit. I don't know if I can trust him in, at guard, but he is a best as a pass protector. That was where he, frankly, thrived at Temple. Now, the scheme helped him out a little bit, but Hennessy doesn't have very many bad reps on tape. That's a big deal for me. He does, however face a pretty significant increase in competition going forward. Going from Temple to the NFL, that's going to be a little bit different, but he's been great in that area. He hasn't allowed a sack in not one, but two years. That's impressive. Only five hurries in that time frame. So Hennessy, a very, very good pass protector. Now, if you're going to a wedding, there's a reason I asked you guys that. Make sure you look good. Maybe don't show up the, the bride or the groom. That's, that's frowned upon. But make sure you look great. Get a custom-fitted suit. That way the photos you take there are perfect for you. They will hook you up with a master stylist, Kashiyama will. All you got to do is call or text them, 214-448-9037. You'll meet your master stylist. You'll get a tailored suit, and it'll be delivered to you in 10 days. Just like that and it is the best fitting best feeling suit you will ever own at kashiyama so again that phone number 214-448-9037 that's in the comments and in the description number four on our list a name i think you guys know tyler biotish you can call him tyler uh ba if you want to just make it easier on yourself that's kind of a tricky last name Beatish is viewed as the number one center entering this year. A three-year starter, and those three years, by the way, the only time he's played center before, he was a defensive lineman before that. Kind of crazy, right? He wasn't as good this year. The numbers look the same, but the way he lost, it just, it wasn't great. He's still a much better run blocker than he was and is a pass protector. I know the numbers look fine there weren't as many reps for Beatish either because Wisconsin just ran the football because, you know, they're great at that. Why do something you're not good at? My biggest issue is that there are too many reps in which Beatish ends up on the, on the ground. You can't have that out of your center. If your center is on his butt, you are cooked. You are in really bad shape. I know, I know he went to Wisconsin, and I know that Travis Frederick went to Wisconsin. Beatish is not nearly as good as Frederick is. That's why I think... Maybe you consider it starting on day three. I think his stock has kind of dropped from the NFL's perspective. I'm still a little bit higher on him quite that much. Now, there are some other center draft prospects I want to mention here. These are more late round guys. Jake Hansen, Keith Ishmael, Zach Shackelford. Some of you guys know him from Texas. Daryl Williams jumps out to me as maybe an option, but we got five different draft prospects on here. I think they're all better than these five here, including Tristan Colon Casillo, who I believe the Cowboys at least briefly met and discussed with, or at least had a little brief interview at the NFL combo. Now the number one draft prospect at center, at least for me is Cesar Ruiz out of Michigan, a two years, two plus year start from Michigan had some reps early on in his career and his freshman season. He has played both center and guard, and with some uncertainty around Connor McGovern, more on him in a little bit, that intrigues me a little bit. He is still very young, and he is still developing. You're not taking Ruiz to be the instant best center in the NFL. You're taking him knowing, hey, by the end of year one, a little bit further along in year two, and into year three, he's going to be really good. Because Ruiz, folks, isn't even 21 yet. That's how young he is. So, yeah, the production isn't quite what you want. They did change schemes and kind of threw him off a little bit early on in the year. The production, not quite what you want, yes, but he's only 20. Imagine what he'll be in three years when some of these centers are still two to three years older than him. And I want to make this note, too, very quickly here. We make a big deal over how big Tyron Smith's hand size is. He's got 11-inch hands. 
That's the same hand size that Cesar Ruiz has. That's among the upper echelon of NFL players. So they're very different players, totally different sizes than everything else in play styles. But there is really some minor comparison here. Just that the age and the size and the hand size works in favor of Ruiz. I'm not taking him, though, in round one. I don't think that's a good fit for the Cowboys. If he's there in round two, I will consider it. I don't think he's going to be, though. And that's my issues overall with the draft class. They're just the value doesn't match up with other needs for the Cowboys. So instead, I choose to look internally. And I see two possible options. I see Connor McGovern and I see Joe Looney. Now, we'll reveal in a second who I have, number one, who I have, number two. But I want you guys to vote. Type M for McGovern and L for Looney. As I think about this more and more, folks, I actually lean more towards Joe Looney, which is kind of a change for me since the initial news broke. Now, he did start at center when Frederick missed 2018, and I'd be fine throwing him out there if he wins what I think will be a camp battle for that job because Looney was better than I think we all thought he was going to be that season. Now, I, I think we've overhyped it a little bit, but he was better than expected, not that the expectations were all that high. He is back on a one-year deal. It's actually a $2.43 million deal. It's only going to count, count about 1.2 against the cap because there's the new veteran exception rules that Cowboys can, and other things can hand out. Looney was the first guy to get that deal. So counts against the, against the cap less and he gets paid more. But I think at least a little bit, we are kind of romanticizing the job that Joe Looney did. And he did a fine job. He did a low-end starting caliber job, but I don't think he was as great as we want to maybe remember him as being. I can justify starting him. I can live with him starting at the center position. I just wonder if maybe there's a player out there who can give you a little bit more of a boost and you can keep Loney as your great backup swing guy. I think that's still valuable. And that brings me to number one, Connor McGovern. If the season started tomorrow, I think Looney would be the guy. But the season is not going to start tomorrow. We'll see if it starts on time, quite frankly. And McGovern didn't play last year. So he very much is a complete and utter unknown. But I'll tell you what, in their initial evaluation process, the Cowboys liked McGovern more than they liked Joe Looney. They had a second round grade on McGovern. That's why they took him in round three, because he was the best player by a pretty decent margin left on their board. And he does have center experience. He played that role at Penn State. Now, he missed all of last year with a pectoral injury. So he is very much a wild card. But if he is able to be the, the player the Cowboys think he can be, I think he could beat out Looney. Now, it will certainly be a competition. Let the best man win. I am not actively saying you got to start McGovern no matter what. No, no, no. I think if it is an open competition, both players stay healthy, I think there's a pretty good chance that it's McGovern who in the end ends up winning the job at center for the Dallas Cowboys. Hey Cowboys fans, thanks for watching the Cowboys Report. If you haven't already, click right here to subscribe to our channel for all the best Cowboys coverage on the internet. That's news, rumors, highlights, mailbags, film studies, and a whole lot more. And I'm making your lives a little bit easier as well with the next Cowboys Report video right here.